Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome back to the channel. Or if you happen to be a first time visitor, please don't forget to click on that big subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest sci-fi, TV and movie news on YouTube. So today I'm talking to you about the recent trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, it dropped just the other day, um, showing us a few new clips from this new Ghostbusters movie. I'm a big Ghostbusters fan. I normally I do tend to do mostly Star Trek content, but being as I'm such a huge Ghostbusters fan and I'm really looking forward to seeing this movie come out, uh, which is due out in November, uh, I thought I'd do a little bit of a breakdown video on uh, some of the shots in the trailer and see what extra bits and pieces we can learn about this upcoming Ghostbusters movie. I did a video a while back, oh, it seems like forever ago now, um, when the first teaser trailer dropped, I think it might have even been like December of 2019 maybe, where I broke down that trailer. So if you're interested in seeing my breakdown of the first Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer, please click up in the link up here and that will take you to that video to have a look at. There's some really interesting stuff and links to the first Ghostbusters movie in that, uh, in that video, so be sure to check it out. But anyway, let's get into this new trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife and see what we can learn. So the bulk of our movie seems to take place in small town USA, this town called Somerville, where the daughter of Egon Spengler and his grandchildren end up moving to because they're a bit down on their luck. The movie seems to centre around the character of Phoebe, Egon's granddaughter, who's very much like her grandfather. A lot of this history seems to come out during a date between Paul Rudd and Carrie Coon's character here in this diner. And it looks like things start to get really interesting as uh, Phoebe starts to discover all of the little hidden uh, gadgets that Egon's got stashed away in the farmhouse in the form of all the old Ghostbusters gear. We get a really cool nostalgic look at a photo here from the uh, original Ghostbusters movie with the Ghostbusters standing outside the uh, firehouse in New York, which is a nice little look back at the first film. Next, we get the first of one of our legacy character return cameo appearances by none other than Annie Potts in the role of Janine Melnitz. And I get the impression from this scene that it could well possibly be the mother of Carrie Coon's character. It seems quite likely that uh, Janine and Egon got married and uh, the kids are in fact her grandchildren as well as the mother Carrie Coon's character uh, being her daughter. Now in this small town of Somerville, it seems like there's a lot of psychokinetic energy about, uh, no thanks to the mine that they've got here, courtesy of the old Evo Shandor, who you guys might remember as one of Goza's key followers. It definitely seems like in this film we're going to get all of the really great nostalgic Ghostbusters props that we saw from the original film, as we see one of the characters holding the um, PKE scanner. Uh, here. Not to mention a lot of great nods to the first film, including this scene with Paul Rudd uh, experiencing some uh, Stay Puft marshmallow packets that have come to life, which sort of reminded me a little bit of the scene with Dana Barrett with the eggs jumping out of their shells, things animating themselves uh, weirdly, like the toaster jumping around. It's definitely all in that same ballpark. Now next is one of the most exciting shots from the trailer, which shows this uh, underground temple in the bottom of the mine shaft the kids are lowering themselves down into, and it clearly shows a statue of Goza with the iconic flat top haircut, uh, the pyramid behind her, much like we saw in the first film. So there's no doubt anymore that uh, Goza is back for this film. We've got the big swirly cloud vortex in the sky, much like that appeared above the building in New York. And we've also got the big pink energy ribbons that are flying through the sky. All these iconic visual imagery that is uh, so nostalgic for stuff we saw in the first film. They're definitely paying a lot of fan service in this film, which is great. Even the shot of a lady at a cafe pouring a drink for a uh, minor corpse uh, is a direct link back to that shot of the guy getting into the cab where the uh, cab driver uh, was a corpse in the first film. I love it. Now, we know Goza's turning up. We also now know that the Terror Dogs are returning, and they are Zul and Vince Claw the key master and the gatekeeper. I wonder if this potentially means that Paul Rudd or Carrie Coon's character uh, is going to get possessed, much like uh, Sigourney Weaver and uh, Rick Moranis' character did in the first film. Then we get a really exciting looking sequence with the kids driving Ecto-1. They're chasing a ghost here, which is a similar type of ghost to Slimer, but this one's called Muncher, I believe. We've got a gunner's seat on Ecto-1. We've got a remote control ghost trap. It looks like a great sequence. Lots of fun. We've got Paul Rudd's character and the kids here watching an old YouTube video of the Ghostbusters TV commercial from the 80s. And we also see some other links here in the, in the side column here on YouTube, where we see 10 signs the government is run by Shandorians, i.e. Uh, followers of Evo Shandor. Where are the Ghostbusters now? Proton Acceleration with Megan Aram. 
and Savage Science of the Proton Pack with Adam Savage from the Mythbusters. <laughs> and in our very last trailer shot, we see the inside of, if we flip this shot around, an occult bookstore. Now, who ran an occult bookstore? Well, if we remember back from Ghostbusters 2, Ray Stance was, in fact, running an occult bookstore. And the voice on the phone confirms it. We're closed. So a few years back when the uh, the female Ghostbusters movie, uh, what was it called? Ghostbusters Answer the Call, uh, came out with um, you know Kristen Wiig and uh, Melissa McCarthy and so forth. Um, there was a lot of pushback against that movie and uh, people, a lot of people said that they didn't like it. Personally, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good movie. I thought they did a good job of capturing the tone of Ghostbusters in that film. I want to hope that this new Ghostbusters movie, when it comes out, is going to capture that tone and flavour of the original Ghostbusters. Because there are aspects of this trailer that although they look cool, and there's a lot of harkbacks to the first Ghostbusters movie, and a lot of in-jokes in and references and stuff that fans are going to pick up on, the tone does seem a little bit teen angsty, much like sort of maybe Stranger Things. And I'm thinking it's trying to appeal to the Stranger Things audience. And I want to really hope that it's not going to be too dramatic and it's going to have that levity and that uh, light-hearted tone and the and the jokes and stuff. Vinkman and, and Egon and, and Ray and everything. There was a bit of jokes. There was a light-hearted tone in that, in that first Ghostbusters film. And I want to hope that there's going to recapture that tone in this film. It, it seems like it would have the potential to be a little bit more mopey and a bit more, you know, overly dramatic than the first Ghostbusters film, which had that light tone and that sort of fun, playful tone. And we do capture aspects of that tone. I think we do see with the scenes with Paul Rudd in the supermarket with the uh, little Stay Puffed Marshmallow Men and everything going crazy in the supermarket. There is a light tone there. I'm just sort of, I guess, concerned about the stuff with the kids and how that's going to play out, you know. And just, I suppose, making sure that that there is enough of that flavour of the original Ghostbusters there because I think Jason Reitman as a director tends to do these sort of more dramatic indie films and although his father directed the original Ghostbusters, I want to hope that Dad is well and truly looking over his shoulder when he was in the director's chair just to make sure that the, the tone and, and, and flavour is right. I know I say tone and flavour a lot, um, but it's kind of the, the heart and soul of Ghostbusters. So I want to, we want to make sure that that is, that is right and that's on the money. If you're a Ghostbusters fan, you might want to click on this video, which is what I did a few years back with my kids, which is a little Ghostbusters fan film. It's the video on my YouTube channel which has the most views and over 3 million views. It's a lot of fun, so check that out. So what did you guys think of the Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer, the second full trailer we've got now? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Uh, please, guys, don't forget to, uh, to like, to comment, uh, to share this video with your friends, and click on that big subscribe button to uh, stay up to date with all my videos. And also, please uh, feel free to check out my merchandise page, which has heaps of really cool sci-fi-flavoured T-shirts, Star Trek, Star Wars, you name it, in the merch store. That really helps support the channel. And I'll catch you guys very soon for my next review. I'll see you then.